out, but we'll be done soon. Um, we're going to be talking about mastering your thoughts and emotions. This is a huge topic. Today I was lashed out at some, somebody lashed out at me today because they were not mastering their emotions. They were, uh, were not being very nice. All right. So I don't know who's going to come on. I think we feel like we've been out of the rhythm. We had a vacation on Monday. Um, who wants to, to share uh, some of their takeaways for uh, Element 23? I swear I've done this element like 10 times. <laughs> this is my my go-to element right now. Leanne was like, you have to come tonight, Tabitha. <laughs> it's your element. Um, I think it just really has you. My my thing with element 23 is that it it takes time, right? It's, it's not one of those elements that you can go through. You really have to be intentional. And it even tells you, like, are you ready? Like, you have to be ready to go into this element because this one does take a lot of time and you to stop and think with intention about um, everything that you're doing and, and what, why you're doing what you're doing. Um, so uh, this time I'm going through it again. Actually, I just started it again. Um, and I got a different color pen. <laughs> and so I was like, a, I'm in a different place. Every time I go through it, I'm in a different place. But um, my, and I think I got control of my emotions and then I, I'm right back here. So it's a struggle for me. When you talk about, um, emotions, does it mean like, um, when something happens or, you know, occurs and then is it, uh, like, is it, is it in relation to turning to food or is it something else? No, just um, reacting. So, yeah. Sometimes, I guess sometimes it could be where I, where I, <laughs> I like to like if, if I'm having a bad day, my go to is I want to go have a beer. Like <laughs> it's still one of my things, right? I'm like, okay. just tell my tell my husband, I was like, meet me at Korean barbecue and I'm ordering a beer. <laughs> that's kind of what, but but that's not normal. Like that's it's not just about like the food anymore for me. I think that's why mm -hmm. I'm in a different place now that I'm going through it again. In the beginning, that's where it was, but mm -hmm. it's not where I'm turning yeah. to food. I think it's just about staying above the line, about like um, knowing what my intention is and mis the mismanaging of the emotions is big mm -hmm. for me. Um, so it's just, you know, I want to, and sometimes I feel like it even makes, makes me sick physically when I, when my emotions start to take over. So um, I'm trying to really figure out what is my trigger, what are my triggers and how I'm going to do, um, what can I replace those emotions with what can I replace that with in order to make a better um, decision for myself? No, oh, I love that. I love that. Um, you know, Dr. A talks about this. I, uh, he says uh, on page 456 says we feel, we feel we have all, all we need is, uh, wow. I can't even read today. We feel we have all we need and believe we have finished our development He's talking about basic at 14 years old. You kind of had enough skills to get through in life. Um, but uh this element's supposed to expose the way the expose you to a different way of looking at the world. I think they test us a little bit later in this chapter here. Um, but the 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 other thing he says in here is the truth is that most people are oblivious to the fact they, that they look through their lens in a very rigid perspective based on their level of maturity. I thought that was interesting. You probably are thinking of people and how they respond, you know, and probably not in a positive way. And you're like, oh, you know, but that I think there's truth to that. There is how they view the world, how I view the world, right? Sometimes it's not the best. Yeah, absolutely. It, I mean, it really yeah. does. Oh, sorry, it, but it does go no. into a little bit about like self guilt. Um, you even start like, and it's crazy because. You know, I'm I'm a pretty positive person naturally, but like I do, I get into this like this this realm of I feel guilty, self guilt. That's that even that the word disgust. That's that's where it's at. Like I look at you know sometimes and I'm like, wow, that's you know what I'm doing. Like you know the way that I'm I'm feeling or the way that I'm I'm responding to what's going on in my life. That's 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 big. Like I feel 
like sometimes I feel guilty for it. Sometimes I feel like, man, that's not who I am. Why am I acting like that? Or, you know, why am I even going through these emotions? So again, work in progress. Well, this well, I, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, but that's, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Cause there's some people who don't do that, right? Like they be total jerks or, you know, whatever the, 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 the reaction is and they're completely justified. Right. In their brain. Right. They don't even question the way, well, this is the way I feel. So it must be okay. No, not necessarily. Right. Like I mean, we, yeah, we can all feel, but, but why do we feel that way? You know, when it's, when it, maybe it's a toxic thought or a toxic reaction. I yes. love that. I love that you're questioning yourself. I think that's the best thing ever. Truly. It, it um, does though, but it takes, toll, to it takes a toll on me though. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yes. That's how we grow. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Gosh, I mean, especially Sometimes you older, just gotta, you? Yeah, I agree so much. I'm growing so much from from all of those emotions and all of those those moments I go through. We need to go through them, but um, yeah, it's a learning for sure. Yeah, especially if you have kids, how you respond to them, right? Oh, amen. And with <laughs> just what you were saying there too, like the one, like the thing that really stands out to me is when he says discomfort is the price of a meaningful life, right? And that's where we jump into those other questions. Are we open-minded? Are we, do we desire that growth or do we get defensive? Do we feel the need to be right? Do we, you know, so that discomfort is where we grow. In everything, right? (laughs) I mean, seriously, like, I totally agree. Even what is the doctor? He's talking here. He says, uh, well, this is basically what you were saying. In fact, now my old ego based thinking uh, tries to take over and I laugh at how much energy I would expend needing to be right. But come on. Sometimes you're just right. Right. So. Well, I like how he brings up too, like who who's in control, you know, like toddlers when they have emotions and throw a fit, you know, they don't know what, how to control those. And even as adults, as a coach, client, doesn't matter. We all have to work on these on a daily basis. And, you know, I have a few people that just say a few things that just trigger me. And then I am no longer in control. I'm not talking about my kids. (laughs) There's just, and that's what this element kind of brought to light. And I was talking about some of those individual people that I don't know what it is, but they just know how to push my buttons. And then I'm just, I'm not in control anymore. And that's not them. That's me. And no, it doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong. That's me. And, um, and I also really like how he says that, you know, that he's not saying use positive thinking and then everything's going to be happily ever after, because that's not true. And I just think that, uh, a lot of us don't until you're in it, like this kind of aspect of, healthy habits doesn't get touched because this is the hardest, you know, having to look within, having to admit that we have that self-disgust or, you know, uh, emotional mismanagement, you know, and how, and understanding the, the hormones that it does and the science behind it, but then also really acknowledging my, the three-year-old or my, you know, am I being the adult in this situation? And then for me, yes, it is food. If I'm having a bad day, I, what's in the, what's in the fridge? If I don't feel good, like right now I'm sick and I've caught myself wanting to go into the kitchen to go get some soup, but cause I don't have any off to be a soup. <laughs> so, um, I think this is an element that like you said, Tabitha, I do it too. I, every time I go, back around I grab a different colored pen and highlighter and I haven't done this one fully yet um but 
it's a long one, but that was, that was my thoughts. You're on mute, Andrew. Oh, I was just saying, I love that. Um, on that note, I mean, he talks about, and this was, this was all very new to me when I first read this uh, a while back, but, um, you know, the, the lizard brain, the Labrador brain, and, and the, the human brain, that was huge for, for me. And then I identified it not only within myself, but the people that I would talk to or even clients, um, you know, the sometimes, uh, if someone feels threatened, they'll have an automatic response. They, you know, a defensive, maybe their feelings were hurt. Um, and you can see it um, along with some other things that he's talked about with the drama triangle and things like that. You can sometimes see the reactions, certainly my own reaction. Um, but uh, one of the things that I used to talk to Eric Boyette about was that I do believe that we go through all three versions at some point at some speed so the lizard the labrador and the human the trick is to get through those levels fast right so instead of just a snap response we can you know catch ourselves be detached from the emotion and go right into okay what is really happening right now and how am i going to respond i mean have you guys ever had that um, that emotion where you snapped and then whatever you've had feelings about it and then a month later you're like oh now i'm like thinking clear about it now um, just took a month to get through that, whatever it was. Right. Um, but I think that's a worthy goal of striving for is, you know, to really practice it. And we're human. It's not easy, but I think that's well, and how many of us grew up, you know, as kids with a bad day or whatever, you know, you get comfort in the kitchen, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. At, I mean, that was my mom and I's only relationship is when I didn't feel good or had a bad day, she would cook me something. So that's, you know, taken 25 years of trying to reprogram that is hard. And I even catch myself now doing that with my kids. And I have to catch myself to not continue that cycle that there's other ways to deal with it. And so I think mm -hmm. we get so caught up in the lizard because you know a lot of times we don't even realize what we're doing so i mean sure. that was I, I know i'm not the only one that had the, <laughs> the grandma or mom that cooked every time you didn't feel good yeah yeah you know? my nana was good at that she's the best and i'm so like guilty of that like you said with my daughter like she's not feeling good now first week of school is already sick fever and everything and so I'm like my my first go-to is like food like let me make you some food let me like and that was you know even she's having a bad day with her own emotions my first go-to is like what do you want for let me make you whatever you want for dinner let's make it better and and that's and that's I think it is culturally like I, I did grow up in a Japanese culture where food is on the table like like this like if if that's how you make people know that they're welcomed and that they're comforting you and that that they care about you and and so you're right i'm i'm guilty of doing that for her and not breaking that cycle so that's wow you just brought big awareness to me <laughs> yeah it's huge well and it's and it does need to be a good thing though like you know it's not all negative and i you know i absolutely want traditions to continue but it's that obsession. It's that, you know, that's the only way to make, make us feel better, you know? And so I, it's finding that balance. It really is. And we can make better choices of what we're offering our kids. It's like, like, you know, maybe some fruit, something like that, or like something healthier, because that's not what I'm giving her now. Like, no, let me make a pot of rice. Let me, let me do the things that, um, I know you like that. I don't matter what, you know, what the health ramifications are. Like, I just want to make you feel better. That instant gratification, that instant um, feel better. Yeah. We're not like, Oh honey, let me go get you some celery. Oh, you'll feel better. <laughs> yeah. That'll make it all better. Andrew. <laughs> all yeah. better you know, for her. Andrew, when you kind of started talking about, um, you know, really kind of shifting like the, the way that you look at these things, you, you, you got me thinking about exactly this, you guys of like showing up better than 
than we have been showed up for, not because of, you know, lack of care, but like lack of knowledge. Our parents did the best with what they had. But now we know that like, it's not even in my opinion about offering my kids a healthier option. Food is just not an option for fixing emotions anymore. Right? Like you have this feeling, we need to deal with that feeling. And the way that we deal with feelings is by naming it. Right? Like, what are you even feeling? What does that feel like in your body? And then how do we change that feeling? And it's never going to be food if we can separate like, you know, that the, the thing that the stimulus, right? Like what started it and what are, how are we going to respond? And when we can take an, enough time between there, like that's when we get to apply this entire element, right? So I get all fired up about it because I do the same thing, which is like, what can I offer them that's healthier for them? It's like, how about freaking skills to manage their emotions that doesn't involve food, right? And this, no, like I'm, all of Element 23 right. has this in it for us, which is so cool that we get to work through it because us working on ourselves is working for our children. I think, I, I mean, Anna, I think you're 100% right. Um, I've had conversations unrelated to Dr. A's book about how society tries to fix things and it's, what's the underlying, and, and not to take this too, too many far directions, but there's a lot of gun violence. There's a lot of tragedy with shootings. It, the underlying issue is mental health. How, th- what's going on up here? This is, that's in my opinion, it's like the underlying problem. That's the, so to your point, Anna, like, no, we need to talk about it. Like, no, we need to figure out what's going on emotionally with like that sort of conversation. I, I hundred percent agree. That's the the root cause of, you know, the issues that, that maybe as we're as an adult, as we grow up. And for my parents, I, they did not have the skill sets. They did not talk to me about the things that I talk to my kids about right now, nor did Same. I don't know if the information wasn't av- available. It wasn't, they didn't seek it. Right. We're, mm-hmm. we're better. We can be better. Like you said, I totally agree. The you the know, trippiest and, part for me is like, we, our parents always, and I'll use parents, Lucy, right? Like people that cared about us wanted to help us change the way that we felt. They knew that they didn't, I feel sad. And they're like, Oh, I want to help you feel happy. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, they wanted to change the way we felt and had such good intentions, but like, that's never going to, it's okay to feel sad. What if we just told each other that like, Oh my gosh, Andrew, I understand why you feel sad. And it's totally okay that you feel that way. Like where in your body do you feel that? Oh man, my stomach is like super upset. Like, Oh, what's something we can do to move that energy around? Like, do you think maybe we should drink some water, go for a walk, meditate, right? Like what if we like actually change the way we feel like for real, for real. Right. Like it's a, it's just crazy. Cause I feel like we get to break that cycle of what's even, it's like a diversion, right? Like, Oh my gosh, you have a really big emotion. Let's eat a bunch of sugar and then we'll feel so happy. Well, that's true. You will, but don't do that. I mean, for like a very short period of time. Right. <laughs> and then I I'm feel joking, like, I'm We're recording right now, but I don't feel well. That's for sure. Yeah, to piggyback off of Anna, like I always talked about how I don't want to use food as a crutch anymore. You know, like when I feel a certain emotion, I look at food or an adult beverage, you know, being like, this is something I can lean on. Um, but now like being through my health journey and being more self-aware working through, you know, the mental health aspect, um, for myself, I've caught things so much faster, kind of like what you're talking about, Andrew, like we go through all three stages, but we want to go through them faster. I think when I first started, I, I stalled a lot, like, oh my gosh, like this is too difficult. I can't do this. But now like when I get to those emotions, I'm so much more aware. And so I'm just like, now that I'm aware of this specific emotion, how can I, you know, manage it the right way versus turning to like drinking or, or food. Um, 
So yeah, that's kind of how I can see food as an addiction too, right? It's like, just like alcohol, just like drugs, or just any other type of addiction out there. We just use it as a crutch when there's something deeper going on on the inside. Um, but just like you're saying, Rebecca, it is a lot harder to talk about that part and, um, and to deal with. But Nikki, I really liked what you said about the, the ego part. You know, we kind of have to go through the discomfort so that we can understand there's something that needs to change in how we handle it. That was really cool. You know, uh, I'm sure somebody has this in their life, but maybe there's a very toxic person that stirs up emotions in your world. And, and, and as much as we work on this, I have this, one of those. <laughs> yeah. I would be shocked if nobody on this call did not have that one person at some point in their life that stirred those emotions. Um, but for you guys on this call, I mean, if you guys, I mean, no one can make us feel some way, but sometimes people just do, right? They're just, they, they're not productive people in our lives. Has anybody distanced themselves from that to have emotional, I don't know, more, better well being? Um, family, friends, um, you had to do that? Nobody, just me? Okay. No, I've had to distance. I've had, I may not be able to physically distance, mm. but I've really had to because she lives in my backyard. But I have learned to emotionally distance myself and just be in control that that is who she is and that is her mindset on what I'm doing. And I just have to, I get to be in control and not let her emotions control my emotions kind of thing. Um, And I really like what he said in here too, is, you know, remember that emotions drive action and this can be a very powerful tool if we direct them towards our health and well being. you know, um, yeah. You know, we have lots of things in here, but something that a teacher taught my son is when you get really angry to scrunch up your face, like really tight and get like this for like 10 seconds and then just release and then just let it all go. And I walked by his bedroom door and he took his hangers last night and threw them because he was really upset that I told him to put his clothes away. He said, I see that you are angry right now and you need to do your face scrunch. And he did. <laughs> it was cute, but yeah. That's good. I love that. Sarah, I think she said she's got a couple of people. She's had to. Yeah, she says she doesn't need a negative energy in her life. I, I think that's, you know, you can control your environment. I think there's something to that as well. Um, you don't have to uh, uh, have people that trigger you. You know, if you, you know, you can control what you can control and do that. I'm not saying that we don't work on, on how we react to things, but some of the stuff it's, it can be difficult. Yeah. I think I love what I always remember when I think about that is that circle, right? The circle of what, of control, Trust. what you can oh. control. And then the circle of influence, the things that may influence that. But at the yeah. end of the day, you know, do I, I have boundaries and that's how I look at it, right? Not necessarily that I've let someone completely go because part of me feels like at some point I have an influence and I hope that it influences a potential change for mm-hmm. them if they need it, right? Or recognize that they want it. Um, and so I, I think there has to be a good healthy balance there, um, especially when we're talking about from a coaching aspect, it's people who are feeling that way need us most and they just don't know it yet. Right. So how can we make sure that we're still there to influence somehow, but we've set boundaries enough to where there are, you know, we can still control what may trigger us or, um, you know, where we are willing to um, compromise and where we aren't. So. No, I, I agree. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, we can still be positive. I think Facebook, I don't know how your, your relationship to all that is, but like, yeah, I might not hang out with the person 
and I might even see their feed, but they might see my feed. So maybe I don't unfriend them or something like that because I can still be a positive influence on them. Um, yeah, absolutely. Anybody else want to share kind of some takeaways from what kind of we're kind of coming to the end here? Wait, real quick before um, who who's on just the phone number? Uh, three six zero seven zero four. That's Amina Clay. That's me. Hi, Amina. Hi. Amina is just a client. Amina is just a client, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, Amina, just so you know, you you won automatically tonight. <laughs> so <laughs> no, I was going to do it for fun and just put your name on the wheel and spin it. It just be your Yay! name, but we'll save some time. <laughs> Amina, you're so lucky. I know. That's so great. <laughs> Amina, all right. Anyways, anybody else want to share? No. I just want to say everything that you explained, Nikki, was I think the exact um, definition of you know the top to the bottom and maturity and um, you know going from the lizard to the human. Like, I think this, that whole influence, like really brought it home. I thought that was awesome. Agreed. Agreed. Awesome, you guys. Well, hey, good conversation today. Again, I think that there's only 26 elements, guys. So what, in six weeks we'll be done? Like, I think that's pretty rad. You guys have been rocking through this. We'll start all over again. It'll be great. <laughs> All right. Awesome, you guys. Awesome. All right. Well, have a wonderful night. Uh, Amina, I'll put your uh, I'll put your credits in there. Thank you for joining us tonight. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah, see you guys. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.